Ignacio Coronel Villarreal is probably one of the most mysterious and secretive drug lords you'll ever hear of. Even though he ran one of the most active cartels in Mexico, no one really knew him that well. People had a name to fear, but they didn't have a face or history to associate with it. He spent his life running his business from behind the scenes, and his cartel created so much chaos that the Mexican government had to send in 120 soldiers to finish him off. But how did this mysterious man become so powerful? Where did this story start and how did it end? In today's video, we will uncover all aspects of Ignacio's life, so make sure to watch till the end. But before we get started, please take a moment to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more similar content. When we say Ignacio was mysterious, we don't mean he just became extra careful about his privacy. After he started running the Sinaloa cartel, we meant that all information about him, even before he became a big name, is very blurry. In fact, we can't be sure of his birth date and year either. According to popular sources, he was born on 1st February 1954, but for all we know, that could be false information too. What we do know about him is that at a very young age, he began to work in the drug ring. He was said to be born in the Gulf state of Veracruz before moving to the northwestern state of Durango, which is very popular for its drug trafficking tradition. In his initial years, he shadowed and learned from two highly skilled drug traffickers. One of them was the leader of Juarez cartel, Amado Carrillo Fuentes. He ruled the border city of Ciudad Juarez and was also known as the Lord of the Skies. And the second person was Eduardo Gonzalez Quitarte, El Flaco. During this time, he learned every aspect of trafficking he could, from land to air to seas. Everything he learned in these early years would help him shape the Sinaloa cartel in the future. By the time Carrillo Fuentes died in 1997, Coronel was ready to start big on his own. This was also the time when Coronel was seen associating closely with the Beltran Leva brothers and Luis Valencia, who was the head of the Del Milenio cartel. He, along with Juan Jose Esparagosa Moreno and Ismael Zambada, Beltran Leva brothers, all joined the Sinaloa Foundation, which was newly formed at the time after the escape of El Chapo Guzman from the Puente Grande prison in Jalisco. The foundation was under the original Sinaloa cartel, which was formed in 1989 and led by the kingpin El Chapo. Together, the group set out to dominate the Mexican drug trafficking ring, and it wasn't long before they were not only dominating the domestic ring, but also spreading their network internationally. Due to this power struggle, the rivalry between the Sinaloa cartel and Zetas, which was a paramilitary-based trafficking group, became the axis of all the violent crimes. In the early 2000s, Coronel was in charge of moving multi-ton quantities of cocaine from Colombia to Mexico using the fishing vessels. From there on, it would be moved to the U.S. border states of Texas and Arizona. It earned him and his cartel a lot of profit and respect in the trafficking ring. There was also this instance when over 80 pounds of drugs were seized in the U.S. The drug had a purity rate of 90% and became the largest single seizure of crystal ice ever made by the U.S. law enforcement. This capture was followed by an official arrest warrant being issued in the name of Coronel Villarreal by both the Mexican and U.S. governments. But regardless of this, the trafficking continued seamlessly, which caused the U.S. government to place a hefty bounty of $5 million on anyone who provides information about Coronel, which would ultimately lead to his arrest. In addition to that, the U.S. government sanctioned Coronel under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Act for his involvement in drug trafficking and took action to prohibit everyone within the U.S. borders from doing business with them. They also virtually froze all his assets on U.S. land in an attempt to make things difficult for him. But nothing really came out of the arrest warrant or the bounty as Coronel was known to be secretive and keeping a low profile. That is until 2008, where he was thrust into the spotlight again due to a slowly building inner war inside the cartel. Sinaloa has firmly maintained the top position among the cartels, but that doesn't mean it was all peaceful inside the organization. In fact, the cause of tension was between none other than El Chapo and the Beltran Leva brothers. In 2007, the rumors of the Beltran Leva brothers associating with their rival, Zetas, were spread, and apparently, Guzman and his counterparts were not very happy to hear of such a possible union. 
As if that wasn't enough, one of the Beltran brothers, Alfredo Beltran Leva, was married to Guzman's cousin and was known to live a party-filled, lavish lifestyle, which was also suggested as a possible reason for the ongoing tension between them. The rift between them has been apparent for a while now, but everything boiled over after one day on January 21st, 2008, Alfredo Beltran was unexpectedly cornered and arrested by the army. Following his arrest, rumors immediately began circulating that El Chapo had probably planned this whole thing, that he had sold out his fellow associates, and it only got worse when El Chapo's son was unexpectedly released from jail following the arrest. This kind of confirmed that El Chapo had indeed provided information that ultimately led to Alfredo Beltran's arrest. The Beltran brothers broke away from the Sinaloa cartel and formed allies with the Zetas, but Coronel firmly chose to stay with El Chapo. Due to this, he, along with El Chapo, were labeled as traitors. Following this rift, Mexico saw a lot of bloodbaths, and for months, the body count kept increasing. In the meantime, the Beltran brothers also took a hit at all El Chapo's allies, due to which many government officials and police were found to be corrupt. Coronel liked to live peacefully in his mansion. He would always stay there with his bodyguards and not leave till he absolutely had to. It was from here he would give instructions to run the cartel, and this is why he was very rarely photographed. There was also a rumor that he lived with the collusion of the security forces which helped him keep his enemies out. There was also some news about how he had managed to strike some non-aggression pact with some rivals. This shows how Coronel was a great negotiator with a brilliant mind, but at the end of the day, he did belong to a cartel where willingness to kill amounts to the days one can live. Coronel would soon prove that he was more than willing to leave peace behind and kill if provoked. Following the rift between the cartels, it was two years later when the Beltran brothers took a personal hit on Coronel. Only the hit wasn't directed at Coronel himself, but his 16-year-old son. On 3rd April 2008, Coronel's 16-year-old son, Alejandro Coronel, was kidnapped and murdered by an alleged Zetas gunman. After the death of his son, Ignacio Coronel vowed to seek vengeance, and three days later, he sent 100 of his henchmen to kidnap and kill 14 people. But because he still respected the cartel rule that set a limit to the casualty, he decided he would use some other way to get his point across. So, he ordered the kidnapping of one of the Beltran Leva brothers' wives. But he apparently didn't have quite the same intention as they did when they kidnapped his 16-year-old son. He managed to kidnap one of the wives of the Beltran brothers, only to release her unharmed. Her safe return was apparently to send a message that just because they killed a child for revenge doesn't mean Coronel would do the same. But after the death of his son, it seems that Coronel's life went downhill from there. Only days after his son's death, he became the target of a government mission. On July 29, 2010, Coronel's mansion was raised by the Mexican army. 120 soldiers backed by two helicopters launched their raid on Coronel's neighborhood. During the shootout, he killed a soldier and wounded another one, but he was very clearly outnumbered. He died after being shot during the exchange. After his death, the army raided his mansion and apparently, they found jewelry, guns, luxury watches, two hand grenades, and seven million US dollars in cash. The Sinaloa cartel suffered a heavy blow with the death of Ignacio Coronel Villarreal, especially because there was no proper successor to him. On the same night, his nephew, Mario Carrasco Coronel El Gallo, was killed by the special forces of the Mexican army. Mario reportedly helped his uncle in all his activities, was familiar with his style of working, and was in the direct line of succession to him. In the same year, multiple members of the Coronel clan were arrested by the Mexican soldiers. The only remaining people that could be his successor were his cousin, Jose Angel Coronel Carrasco, and his nephew, Humberto Rodriguez Coronel. Both of them were arrested by Mexican police and Mexican Navy respectively in 2013. With this, there weren't many who could carry and live up to the reputation and respect the name Coronel once demanded. What are your thoughts about the mysterious Ignacio Coronel? Leave a comment below, like this video, and subscribe to the channel for more.